All right, so here is example five. Now, I do want you to stop, and I want you to write this all down. I really do want you to write it down because it makes sense, and it's going to help you with your practice. So if you don't have this information, it kind of just defeats the purpose of being able to do that practice five. So here, go ahead and stop the video, write it down, and then we'll keep moving. So we're looking at a surveying problem. Now, the biggest part about this is everybody asks, when are we using this in real life? So a real life situation when it comes to your polar coordinates and everything is when you have those surveyors that are out there looking at the grounds before a building is built. So they can try to figure out, will it fit here? Like how much space it has, like what's going on with the grounds around it and everything. If it's going to settle, it's going to be right. That's what surveyors do. They look at that and use our polar coordinates for it. All right. So before a large road construction project before large sorry before large road construction projects or even the construction of a new home takes place a surveyor maps out characteristics of the land a surveyor uses a device called a theod theodolite theodolite sorry to measure angles the precise location of various land features are determined using distances and the angles measured with the theodolite, the light. While mapping out the level, the level site, a surveyor identifies a landmark 400 feet, 450 feet away from uh, away and 30 degrees to the left, and another landmark 600 feet away and um, 50 degrees to the right. What is the distance between the two landmarks? Now. Before you can do that, you're talking about distance, which means it's a distance formula. Now, before you had a distance formula when it came to using two order pairs of on your rectangular um, plane, a rectangular graphing, you had the distance formula. But also when it comes to our polar coordinates and polar graphing, there is a distance formula for that also. So the distance formula is this. And we have our r's and we have our thetas so we have two r's two thetas two in other words two coordinate points there and so write that down p1 times p2 and that's talking about the distance for that and again with that they give you two different points p1 and p2 and so find the distance of it is using the distance formula like you would normally have when it came to the distance formula for a rectangular all right, so this one is actually not that bad. All right, so with it, before we move on to the bottom part here, here's what I want you to think about. Let's say, sorry, ooh, let's say this is our polar axis, axis right here. Now, I'm going to set it up, going straight up and down. Because we talked, it's the problem talked about going left and right. So it says here that the landmark is 450 feet away and 30 degrees to the left. And when we say that, it means we're talking about of the polar axis. Of the polar axis here. Ooh, there you go. So if we're going to the left, that means we're going this direction. We're saying that's 30 degrees there. If we're going to the right, that means we're going this direction, and that's what the other part says, and it said this is 450 feet, sorry. The other side, it said it's going to the right, and it's 50 degrees. Now, I'm going to flip this so you can visually see what's happening here and why we're going to do something in a few seconds. If I were to put it back straight like this, and we have our polar coordinates, we said if an angle goes down like this clockwise, that means it's negative, right? If it goes counterclockwise, it's positive. So this 50, if we're looking at, that's our polar axis right here. Negative 50 goes down, goes clockwise. So here, for this problem, we're going to say that's negative 50 because it's going down, counterclockwise. It's like clockwise. And this is going counterclockwise. 
right? So with that, when we do our angles here in our ordered pairs, we're going to use negative um, 500, negative 50 for this bottom part here for 600 feet. And we're going to use positive 30 for the 450 feet. Right? So here, when we get to our work here, we have our, um, our formula. And so the ordered pairs that we're going to use is for, and this, we can say P1, sorry, I don't know why I put L, P1 and P2. So here, that is um, 450 and 300, uh, sorry, 450 and 30, and that's not negative, it's just positive 400. So it might look like a negative, but it's just positive 400. And then it's 60 and negative 50. All right, so when we put them in to the problem, we put the R's, R's, R1 in, R2, and then put the Q, um, the theta 1 and theta 2 in. And then when we work it out, put in the calculator, we get an answer. It's that. So it's 684.6 feet. Now, because the numbers they gave you are actually all whole numbers, I'd rather this be an actual whole number. So we'll say this is 685 feet. And that's it. That's how far apart they are. And that's all you have to do. There we go. Cool.